There we go. Cool. So, guys, how are you doing today? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, good. Thanks, Keith. Pretty good. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, your debut single scores to be out on March 1st. So, would you like to tell me about scores and the writing behind this new single? You want to start, Ron? <laughs> so, <clears throat> music wise, uh, kind of this one sort of sprung out of nowhere, really. Had a couple of uh, riffs in the background. Um, but I, to be honest, Space Messenger as a whole was, was kind of sprung out of nowhere, isn't it, Tony? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, we, you carry on and I'll, I'll add some bits at the end then. Yeah. So, yeah, so we started the band beginning, well, the 12th of November, to be exact. <clears throat> it was the first day that we kind of pressed go on doing this band. Um, had quite a lot of tracks in the background for a, a few years ago, but Scars in particular is actually a, a new track. So, kind of cobbled that one together, sent it over to Tony. He put the uh, the lyrics down on it and the, the vocals, and then our drummer pieced together the drums. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of been a, a pretty speedy writing process on this one, isn't it? Definitely, um, yeah, hundred percent. But uh, so, yeah. I, as I yeah, as I sort of mentioned um, a couple of other interviews, Ron has had a lot of material sort of sitting there on his hard drive for probably quite a while, and um, this project which became Fates Messenger sort of came about from the ashes of above all really because I recruited Will to play drums and unfortunately above all really wasn't really happening due to everyone's sort of life circumstance situations with work and everything mm -hmm. and uh, Will reached out to me and he said that he knows a couple of other people who were like-minded um, put us in touch with Ron and, and luckily for us Ron had about 10 songs sort of just sitting there at various different stages. So we've just been sort of picking them off and going through and um, Scars was one of the standout tracks, I think. Um, to be fair, they're all really strong tracks. So, um, well, you know, a little bit of variation and difference in them. And uh, yeah, and we're luckily with uh, today's technology, we've been able to put it together very quickly, um, do it remotely. So when we actually get into a room, which is going to be uh, I mean, a couple of weeks, couple of weeks so we're really looking forward to that and then we're going to be starting to play shows so it's come together really well fantastic, fantastic. and uh do you guys plan to release just on the streaming services or there is a video to go along with scores uh, i think not other um, <laughs> yeah go, sorry bro i got me so yeah i was just gonna say so video wise we the, there are plans to do a music video we just haven't got around to it yet um mm. we'll probably do that for so we've got these, we're actually putting two songs out. So we're doing Scars and we've decided we're going to put another one out as well, Bone Chapel. Um, and then the next release is after that. We One of the songs that we've got for that, we're going to do a music video for. So so probably third or fourth track, you'll have a music video. For this, we just want to get the tunes out as quickly as possible. Really. Yeah, I mean, like we say, well, we were just going to do the one track, but we're kind of impatient. <laughs> and I think we, well, I just think as well, we, we're pretty confident that all the tracks we've sort of got waiting in the wings, which is six now with this new one, we've just sort of finished. But, you know, we want to get it out and playing shows and it's always a bit better if people are sort of aware of the music and some of the lyrics. Um, so, yeah, third or fourth track um, probably will be the video, which we're sort of lining up. So, um, and you know, it's always good to test the water as well with... Um, you know, a couple of opening tracks. Will, the drummer, has just self-taught himself. Um, so he's putting the lyric uh, illustrator videos together, the little bits on Instagram that we sort of drop in now and again. There'll be more of those coming out. And they look really good as well. So, um, yeah, you know, there'll be a lot more sort of visual stuff to follow from us, really. Fantastic. Fantastic. And uh, speaking about the upcoming EP, so do you guys have a name for the EP and how does the work coming up and do you have a planned release date for the EP? Um, yeah, well, there's two tracks that are going to be dropping, which is Scars and Bone Chapel, um, which is March the 1st, I believe. Um, following on from that, really, we haven't set a date, but I think because we've sort of changed the plans, whether we're going to put one more single out or we're just going to maybe put another two 
two tracks out and release that as a four track EP. So we're just sort of toying around with ideas at the moment. Um, so and that will give us still another two after that. So um, yeah, not not entirely too sure of exactly how they're going to fall. But um, and I don't. I think probably if we were going to title it, probably the EP would just probably come out of scars. And we're just going to release that on all the digital platforms and, um, you know, see how it goes down. You know, we're a new band. Yeah. Guys, we've done bands before, but as a new new musical project. But we're pretty confident and we're actually buzzing with these tracks. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Sounds good. I think that the, the good thing is we've got a flexibility to do this as and when we want to do it. With It's yeah. all self-recorded, self-produced. Um, all the artwork, imagery, everything like that's done by ourselves. So... You know, we can release the tracks as quickly as we can put them out effectively. So, like Tony said, we've got <laughs> with the one that we're finishing now, that'll be seven, and there's another two that are ready to go in the back. Mm. Um, and we can effectively, as soon as we've written something, we can be putting it out straight away. So, you know, it's it's purely down to how quick we want to get the tracks out. You know, yeah. I think with with the way things are now with streaming platforms and stuff like that people aren't so fussed about albums like they just want to hear music <clears throat> so if we're in a in a position to drop a couple of tracks every like few weeks why not you know it keeps it fresh it's a few weeks for people to listen to the two tracks get into them and then have another couple of tracks or have an ep or, or whatever yeah. so they, they, we've got that freedom to do that Oh, 100 percent. I think um, like like Ron said, you know, drop a track here, drop a track there. I mean, eventually further down the line, if we get established and people are into the sound, which hopefully they will be, we'll 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 knuckle down, get get playing shows, build up a bit of a following, and then actually set to write a, a, an album, I would say, as a as a as a band, functioning band as, as much as we can be with our sort of geographical locations. But again, we'll use the technology, but I think we'll all be part of the writing process. Um, you know, have a bit more input. Not, and that's not to say there's anything wrong with the tunes we've got, but you know, we, we're going to develop as well. So um, yeah, it's going to be exciting times, really. Fantastic. And uh, would you like to tell me about Faith Messenger and how do you guys all join, got together as a band? <laughs> well, Ron, do you want me to take this one? Yeah, go for it. Right. So, well, Faith's Messenger is actually an old, above all track that was one of the tracks on our first seven inch that we released um back on shorehand back in the day so that's like a good 20 25 years old um but the band actually came together as i mentioned earlier um while i was trying to get the uh, reincarnation of above all back up and running after our reunion show um i recruited will um will remain the drummer who had drummed in romeo must die um, I don't know if he's done anything else. Um, oh, <coughs> Hellblind with that. And oh, all. sorry, yeah, Hellblind. I can't forget Hellblind, which is a more recent project. And he sort of put me. In, he's put me in touch with Ron and Paul, who have done bands. So Ron's done uh, Around Me I Must Die and Dishonor the Crown. Paul has done. Uh, he was in a band called Unite. Um, <laughs> so it just sort of all you know all came together. Like I say, I would say most of us probably barring world would sort of stepped away from the music industry as such, you know, with family and work and uh, other commitments, but this has just sort of fallen into place. And I, like I say, going back to, I think it really helped that Ron had pretty much an album's worth of material sitting there ready to go in various stages. So it, it, I think everyone's enthusiasm and positivity has just sort of rolled on with each track because it's come together really quickly and they're great great tunes as well so it's actually been i'm not gonna say it's been easy but it, it you know comparing it to some of the musical projects i've ever done it is easy because the i think the songwriting was there in the beginning so we've just all added our different flavors and um it's come together very very quickly so you know it's all all to come together really from from the ashes of sort of three bands and sort of different scenes and we've all sort of meshed together very quickly so it's been really good mm -hmm. And uh, will there be any focus in 2024 on the touring part? <laughs> Ron, answer that one if you want. <laughs> it depends if we can fit it around everything that's going on. Yeah. Um, I think mean, that's something like we say, we've all got families and stuff. Like, I've got <clears throat> some of got younger kids. 
So he's just trying to fit commitments around all of that. But if we get offered something decent, then mate, if I've got to, I'll pull the kids out of school and take them with us. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they can sit on the merch table. I think for I think for all of us, we're busy. We're all parents. We've got businesses. You know, we've got a lot going on, but. I think we're all hungry to get back out there and play shows. I'm not saying I'll drop everything for a month, and but if we can do mini tours or, you know, we're going to be looking to play as much as possible, but we need to get the material out, get a few sh- shows under our belt, um, perfect our live sound because it's all well and good for us putting this together in the studio, but we've actually got to be able to stand up there and deliver. And uh, I'm sure we will. And um, I think we're going to go down well in quite a, a few different sort of scenes and, you know, um, I think we could fit in on quite a varied bill. So um, hopefully we'll, you know, my main aim, I'd love, as I, what I said with some of the interviews I did with above, always get on some decent um, decent shows, supports, build up our sort of, you know, our local scenes as well. I help to do that and also get on some festivals. That's what I'd like to see us doing. And, you know, and we'll, we'll just take it from there, you know. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, speaking of songwriting, will there be some kind of focus towards a particular uh, area or is it just going to be uh, anything that you want to write about? Lyrically, um, I just tackle, depending on how I'm feeling each day. Also, you know, some of some of the songs, the more evil, thrashy, deathy, they bring out a more sinister sort of darker side. Mine are kind of like, I would say, like personal lyrics sort of, you know, my interpretations and everything that's going on in the world these days, um, you know, but, you know, and I think Ron's got quite a varied style at some, some places, maybe, you know, there's, there's songs regarding, you know, um, social media, there's like, I mean, obviously lyrics, um, and just, you know, everyone's personal sort of uh, perceptions of what's going on, really. I mean, musically, I think Ron, Ron can answer that one for himself. Yeah, I feel like music, it's just, the songs have kind of been born from a lot of like influences that I've had growing up and like a lot of bands that we listen to now. And it's kind of taken an earlier, sort of like late 90s, 2000s kind of sound, um, you know, like your Pantera, Machine Head, Fear Factory, crossing it with like hardcore bands like Hatebreed, Marble, Terror, stuff like that. And then like, mm. yeah, just kind of giving it that modern i say modern polished sound but it's still it's not polished to the point of a lot of bands now that everything's like really militant it's still got that life to it as well so things are pushing pull a little bit um and it's got that kind of like raw sound to it but i think writing wise it's anything that kind of makes you snap your head like mm. as quickly as possible and then sit there with your chin stuck out because the groove hits real hard like mm. um yeah, some like slamming beat downs. Just anything that you can stand there on stage and watch a room full of people kick the crap out of each other. And mm. that's what it's all about. Isn't it? <laughs> I think we're, we're sort of, we're writing stuff that we like to listen to, you know? Yeah. Um, it's got a good mixture. There's there's a lot more thrashy bits than any bands that I've done before, which I love. I think it's great. But we've got, you know, sort of that thrash metal. We've also got, you know, and when people talk about hardcore, I mean, hardcore is so varied these days and hardcore is more about attitude and scene and sort of, you know, input and collaboration. Whereas, you know, whereas I think metal's always been about more sound orientated, but we've got a mixture of everything and we're just chucking it all together and we've got, and there's nothing ever, I think we're ever going to go, well, shouldn't keep that in there because it sounds too this or too that. Anything goes with this band, you know, if we like it, we like it. And if it's, and it fits in the tune, it's going to stay. Um, but basically, it's got to have attitude, and we've got to mean it, and you've got to believe in it. I think, and I think you know everything we've done so far, it's, it's working. So we're just going to carry on with that sort of recipe, I would say. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. And uh, how as a band do you look into the future? Mm, I would just we're just going to take it one tune at a time, get the stuff up. Now, hopefully, people are going to like it. You know, we're no spring chickens, but we've been in other bands, and we know we we know what we're doing. So we just, you know, want to get out, get out there and play a few shows. Ultimately, really playing live is just what my main aim is, and just to uh, build up a bit, you know, a sort of bit, bit of a fan base and people are into it, and just play on varied bills, play on hardcore shows, metal shows, death metal shows, thrash, whatever. I just want well, that's to me, that's my only aim, really. 
<laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And uh, what would you like to say for the upcoming fans of Page Messenger? Go on then, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. That's on, all right. Man. I'll give you, I'll give you um, the worst one. <clears throat> or the most challenging, I should say. The most challenging. I think the yeah. thing is, for people that are listening to it, if if they kind of get the same vibe that we do, like we're playing music that we love listening to. Yeah. And for people that are into that style of music, like if they dig it, then come to a show, like show some support. You know, the age old thing, buy a t shirt because that's what puts money back into the band that we can mm. then afford to do more gigs. Um, you know, and just hopefully people will enjoy it. <clears throat> if they don't, I don't care because I listen to it and I enjoy it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's that's to me, I'll back Ron up there. That that's it. We're we're putting out stuff we want to listen to. Um, we just want to have fun with it, you know. We believe in it, we think they're decent. we believe that they sort of, you know, they can hold their own mm-hmm. on quite a lot of, you know, any 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 show or any festival. So we're just gonna roll with it and see where it gets us to, really. But just, you know, check out our socials. Everything's up and running now. Check out the first tune, or first two tunes, sorry, on March the 1st. And, you know, and if you like it, spread the word. That's all I'm going to say. Fantastic. And uh, Tony and Aaron, I want to thank you both so much for giving me today this wonderful opportunity to have you guys on this interview. And a uh, real pleasure to listen to your new single score and the upcoming EP. And uh, I wish you guys all the best. And really hoping to see you guys on the road soon. Lovely. Cool. Cheers, Keith. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for having us on, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.